Now, just start by asking you one question, which suddenly to me, at my stage in my life, has become important. Where do you buy the mask which makes you look so young? Ah, it's and pure living. Your, your real age. See, I've lived a decent life. I'm not like you, you know. Coming all this way from devices to Salisbury. No, it's, uh, it's yeah, the luck of the game. Everybody says that. People come up to me and they say, you never change. And I say, no. I use the same old gags every year. No, no, we mean, you look just the same. I say, well, I looked an old man when I was young. That's the answer. <laughs> as simple as that. It's incredible. You're in your 70s. And oh, yeah, I'm 76 next month. You don't really look a day over 50. Yeah, oh, that, your eyes are going. <laughs> and I'm wearing the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I bet you stand up to this time very, very well. Well, I keep going. I think that, you see, I've always, my theory is I'd sooner wear out than rust out, which is the answer. I couldn't retire. You see, I had a, a bad uh, accident at the Palladium five, six years ago. I fell through the trap door, smashed all my ribs and had a heart attack. And I could have sued them and picked up a lot of money and because uh, it was their fault. I could have sued them. My solicitor said, sue them and you needn't work again for the rest of your life. So I said, well, let me think this over, because I was lying in bed for two months. And I thought, well, what the hell will I do with myself? I'll join the library, take the dog for a walk. Because he said to me, you'll never work. You must never work again. Otherwise, they will want the money back. Because we, we can get you a sum of money because we say that you can't work. You're incapable of working again. Anyway, I analyzed it. I thought about it. No, I thought, well, I'll take a chance and go back and see if I can still do it because having had a heart condition, I wasn't sure I could still skip round and sing the bee and do what I... I still do it now. Yes, I know. And um, it worked out all right. Unlike uh, a lot of uh, people in the country these days, I'm not afraid of work. Although they don't think ours is work, you see. No, this is... Uh, it is a fact. They think this is a great lark. This is one of the hardest businesses a lot. And to sustain in it, I've been in it now, this is my 52nd year in it, and I'm still in the market, which is marvellous. I look over my shoulder to see people I used to be with, them all gone. And the nearest is Ted Ray, I suppose, and Tommy Trimble. But they're both younger than me. Anyway, I keep plowing along. Ted's talking about the about Yes, I was talking to him today. We, we were on uh, Does the Team Think yesterday, um, the radio, you know. Yes. And he was on Pete Murray this morning, and he said one or two nice things about me. So I gave him a ring this afternoon, because I'm on Pete Murray uh, week after next. Oh, yeah. And, um, well, I want to plug a, a new LP I've made. Really? With all the old rubbish on, you know, the B and the Moth and the Seagull. And, the, and uh, it's, it's the third time I've made an LP. But they want me to do the same songs all the time. Strangely enough, I get so many requests from Australia, New Zealand, South Africa. Where can we get you? And they gradually go out of print, you see. And so I'll be recording them all again. And Is this my point, or is a good word abroad? It must be, oh dear, oh Max, yes. Yeah. I'm going to the launching of his book at uh, Foyle's Luncheon in a fortnight's time, Max. Uh, I was invited to the actual launching, but I was busy, as usual, couldn't go. He's an old mate of mine. How, how did you first come into show with me? How did I? Yeah. I was a late starter. I, I, I worked in an office for eight years after I left school. And um, I was an amateur, you know, doing all the church. It was chiefly church concerts, pensioners concerts. Anyway, who'd let me work? It was as simple as that. Stage stuff. And the fellow saw me working uh, at one of these concerts. And he said, uh, he wrote to me and he said, have you ever thought of going professional and uh, I said well I've thought about it but you know I've never done anything about it he said well if ever you want to go I can put you in touch with a concert party or a living with a comedian and uh, they'll take you on my recommendation so I thought it over and spoke to my family my father said oh you fool you've got a job with a pension you know nothing about it the only person I knew in the business was Tommy Hanley who was then in the chorus of a show called Made of the Mountains, because we were choir boys together, Tommy and I. Not at the same church, but uh, in Liverpool. Anyway, 
after a lot of thought, my, my mother was always a bit stage, so yeah, go on, chance, and she thought it was funny. So uh, I, I left, I gave up a job at two pounds ten a week, and took one at six pounds ten a week, and that was my start. When did the, the name Big Hot start? Oh, that, well, that was chiefly 1938, 1939, bandwagon. I'm, my impact was with radio, which I still love, still love radio. and. Uh, I became a national name and the world was my oyster. Then the war came, bang. I thought, oh, I've worked like hell for 15 years I've been at it then. Just be become recognized and the war broke out. But fortunately, I survived it in every way. Matter of fact, I was in France with Gracie Fields in 1940 and what they call the phony war period. And um, when the, on the German breakthrough, we just got back out in time, Gracie, you know? hmm. You ought to read my book. That's right. Tell, tell them at the hospitals. I've got a card, got a card here that says, uh, oh, there's four hospitals. Yeah. Well, I'll never be in the maternity, that's for certain. Uh, <laughs> there's the devices and district. Hello, playmates. How are you? I'm putting all your names. calling you now. Maternity hospital, devices and district, the round way, and then there's the St. James's. And I know you've got there, you've got Miss Ivy Chapman, haven't you? How are you, Ivy? Nice, they've told me all about you. I hope you can hear me, I'm talking loud. And uh, it's nice to be able to say hello to you all, wh whichever hospital you're in. Especially the girls in the maternity hospital. You just said two magic words, hello, playmate. Mm -hmm. When did they first come up? Uh, that, oh, it's a long story, it's all in the book. You must get my book. It's, it's a... When I started Bandwagon, hitherto my introduction, when I walked on the stage, was say, Hello, folks. Well, now, Tommy Hanley was a very established radio comedian in 1938. He was the kingpin. But the um, press, when they started Bandwagon, rather went for me, you see. They, they thought I was the new genius. And uh, so I used to go and say, Hello, folks. And Tommy Hanley, who was an old mate of mine, wrote me a letter. He was always a bit jealous of me. I, I rest his soul, but he was. And he said to me, I say hello, folks. That's really mine. I thought, oh, well, what can I do? I can't say hello, ladies and gentlemen, or too polite. And I just coined Playmates, and it stuck with me. I mean, I walk down the street now, people always say, hello, Playmates. Even little kids. Tiny kids will do it now. This book you keep mentioning, what is this book? It's my last story, written by myself in longhand, 90,000 words, uh, and, uh, well, most, most biographies are ghosties, you know, other people write them. But I was determined, if anyone wanted to read about it, I'd, uh, I think it was a bestseller, went right up to the top in the Sunday Times. It's called, Guess What? Before Your Very Eyes. And, uh, People who read it said it's very good, and as I say, it's, it's sold very well indeed. Well, I'm pleased to say. Oh, I'll say it. If they care to hang on a little longer, it's coming out in paperback. In paperback? Yeah. Roughly when? Uh, I should think within the next six months. After my long playing record. Yeah. Now, what's the <laughs> record? <laughs> the, oh, the record will be. Uh, it's called. Uh, I think they're calling that before your very eyes. Oh, yeah. Which is a funny title for the record, but. They said, oh, well, if anyone says before your very eyes, they immediately know you're talking about. Like, I thank you. Hello, playmates. I've got thousands of catchphrases. Now, you've had a, a singer out but you've had a lot of success with the songs that you've recorded. Yes, that's right. I mean, you're, you're basically and essentially a comedian. Yeah. But I was a choir boy, as I, I told you, you know, as a kid. In fact, I sang the solo in Liverpool Cathedral Choir, the new cathedral that is not yet completed. I, the first part of it that was consecrated in 1911, they formed a choir for the consecration with the head choir boy of all the parishes, parish churches in and around Liverpool. And I went from my church, which was called St. Michael's in the Hamlet, as I was the, uh, the boy soprano there. And uh, they auditioned us for this um, consecration and chose me to sing the solo. So that was my first command performance. Quite an honor. Well, they had the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Archbishop of York and uh, 
I've done nine command performances at the London Palladium, but uh, that one to me was the, the, gave us my biggest thrill. Could you find a lot of thrills over the years? Oh yes. Between radio and television and films and music, or musical comedy. There's no branch of the business I haven't touched, except ballet, and I've done cod ballet. Yes. Music a bit on a wire, and uh, Shakespeare. But I did a, a musical comedy once called The Kid from Stratford, where I had to learn quite a bit of Shakespeare. I found it damn difficult to learn, I'll tell you that. Because they've several try, times tried to get me to uh, to do Shakespeare, play bottom, like George Roby, like Frankie Howard. Uh, but I said, no. It's, uh, I said, what's the money? I'm very commercial, you see. I'm in show business to earn my living. They said, oh, it's prestige. I said, hell with prestige, what's the money? <laughs> and they told me, I said, oh, no. I can do better than that being in the clubs. <laughs> Is there any particular aspect of show business, you know, be it radio or television, which appeals to you more than anything else? The easiest is, is the filming. Quite the easiest. That's why you get some nets who are film stars, because if they go wrong, they can take it again and again. They only give them about four lines to say it. And it, that is the simplest. You have to hang about a lot. I made 12 top films, feature films, and that is the easiest. But not the most rewarding. Not the most, oh it was, it was very good, very good film, yeah. Yeah, I, I'd have settled for making filming the rest of my career, but it didn't work out that way. You surprised me, I, I mm. thought you'd have gone for radio or cabaret work where you... Uh, no, no, uh, cabaret work I do, radio work I do, television I do, but put me in front of an audience that has paid to come and see me, in a theatre, preferably the London Palladium or the Bristol Hippodrome or the Palace Manchester, a real theatre with a, a good orchestra, good lighting, uh, an audience that's done you the confidence of paying to come and see you. And that's what I came in the business to do, to go on the stage, not to go on radio, not to go on telly, not to go on films, on the stage. And that to me, I'm breathing then, you know what I mean? It's just something to you. You, know. you can feel lousy. As you do some nights, you don't feel it quite up to it. You might have a bit of a cold or a bit of an ache or uh, some domestic trouble or not that I have that. But uh, once you put your foot on the stage, it, it works wonders. Absolutely marvellous. Could you go back now to the old days of the musical? Do you yeah, but I, I'd never be, I would have never have been uh, a real music hall comic. I went on music halls and starred all over the country. I was, I was starting at the Palladium when the war broke out in 1939. Uh, but, but it was because I was well known on radio and they accepted anything from me. But I wasn't broad enough really for music halls. No, my favourite was musical comedy. That's, I love, love musical comedy or pantomime, which I do every year, or summer season, which I do every year. Uh, this uh, Last uh, Christmas I was at Bristol Hippodrome, broke all records. This summer I'm going to Clacton, uh, and uh, next Christmas I go to Manchester, pantomime. You obviously enjoy pantomime. Yes. You, you're enjoying the country cross. Oh, it does. You, you really get such a family audience there. It's marvellous. You see, again, I don't know what's gone wrong with the, with the idiots who run our business now. Oh, I'm not afraid, because they can't touch me. Um, <laughs> now, last year they ran a pantomime in the West End, and who did they put in pantomime? They put Twiggy, uh, Stepto and Son, and people who know nothing about pantomime, but they're well known on the telly or something. And it was a disaster. Now, this year, they announced yesterday what's at the Palladium this year. Richard O'Sullivan, very good on television. Uh, Yusa Joyce and the other fellow who plays her husband, playing the ugly sisters, oh beautiful, yes. Yeah. Uh, Derek Kyler, playing the Baron. None of them know anything about, it's like putting an opera singer into drama, or a drama into, they, you see, pantomime is, is a craft. You've got to be broad in pantomime, and you've got to know it. So I forecast here and now, before your very eyes, the Palladium will be a flop this year. Is, is there anything left in show business that you would like to do that you haven't done? Oh, I think I've done a lot now. 
Would you like to master Shakespeare? Would you like to play? No, it? no, I wouldn't. I would. I love to see it. Strangely enough, I love to see it because I, I sit and I love, love watching other performers in every branch of the business, and uh, I love to see it. And I, 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 I was such an admiration for Shakespeare, the stuff he wrote. All those years and years ago. Or oh, Bacon, whoever it was. Oh, 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 whoever, yes. That's right. But he was he was a fantastic writer, the greatest of all time, probably. There is one thing, Arthur, which uh, perhaps you might like to explain or clarify. You belong to the, the Grand Order of Water Rats. No, I don't. There will now be two minutes silence. <laughs> Pregnant no, right? yeah, pregnant for well, but, but back to the maternity <laughs> one. The uh, <laughs> no, I, I I never joined them. I'm a non-theatrical theatrical. I don't belong to the variety club, the water rats, or anything. For years, I did my job. I clocked on like you do at a factory. Do my job, clock off, and went home. I never went to parties, first nights, anything. Sounds very dull, but it's, it's paid off in the long run. Well, you great. Just your wife and looking at Yeah, keep going, keep going. I've got a, a major clanger there, haven't I? Yeah, what, the water? No, I'm not a water. Never. They try to get me to join the road. Well, if you're working with people, if you, like, I don't know what your, your private job is. Oh, yeah. Are they? Yeah. Oh, well. If you can get away from it, if you're there five, six times a week or days a week, if you can get a break from it, you do. Why? Water that's meet on a Sunday. So you're working with pros all the week. Come Sunday, I'd like to see my daughter, my grandchildren. You know, get with the family. I don't want to go and sit with a lot of pros again. That's why I never joined. Same with the variety club. So, just to get back quickly to your LP again, what's on the LP for people to listen out for? Well, it's got all the... All the ones they know. Yes. Uh, I, you see, during the years, I must have made, ooh, 150 records. Because I was under contract to HMV for a long time. But the old faithfuls keep coming up, as I say. The bee, the moth, the seagull, chirrup, chirrup, the worm, knitting, all the things that are associated with me. And if you don't do them, people won't buy it. Because they expect you to do it. I put, put in uh, at least three I've never recorded before on this new one. Uh, just to break it up, because there's about 14 titles on it. Do you ever update your songs? You know, Never. No. Afraid. Leave them alone. No. Like that, you, you mean I don't broaden them in any way? No, I mean, there's nothing around nowadays that you might slip into your right. I don't mean a contemporary song as such, but say something that perhaps Michael Sanders and Donald Swann have written. You know, like I'm the canoe. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. yes. Song. Uh, well, that, if I sang it, they'd say, oh, he's sung that for years. Because uh, any song that come like, Mud, mud, glorious, mud, they all said, oh, we heard your song, I never sang in my life. <laughs> or I'm a lonely little petunia in an onion fat. They say, oh, that's one of yours. It says, no, I never sang it. But they sound like mine. Because I, I do that type. You see, if you take my songs like the bee and the moth seagull, as I say, they're basically very Gilbert and Sullivan. Yes. They've got, they've got a quality. And now, instead of going as, as they will these days, everybody sings, I did it my way. They can't sing to start with. And it's not their song, it's Frank Sinatra. But uh, I feel I've got something personal in my own little songs. Well, you've given a lot of pleasure over the years. Final bit of pleasure. and have got a message for the... Well, uh, to, to the patients in the hospital, yes. well, God love you all, and I do hope that you, uh, whatever you've got, dear people, I hope you soon get over it, because, as I say, I had a, I had a little touch of it. I've been very lucky. Lucky, God has been very good to me, my health's been good. And uh, apart from that accident at the, um, at the Palladium, when I was two months in St. George's, I had time to think then and sit and think, what a lucky devil I've been. Everything's gone my way. I've looked after myself, but there, basically, I've got everything. So, and I know how boring it can be lying in bed. And uh, so to you all, I do hope that you'll all be soon out with your loved ones again, out and about. And in the meantime, this is your old playmate Arthur Askey saying, Nah, that's you. A lot of rubbish up talk tonight. I've got to go on and work now. And, uh, and I hope I'll have the opportunity of talking to you all again. Bye-bye. Thank you, Arthur. Okay.